In this session, we're going to take a look at working with brushes in Adobe Illustrator. I would have to say that as a graphic designer, coming to understand and work with brushes was one of the biggest breakthroughs in my career relating to my workflow and creativity. Working with brushes, I'm able to do things interactively that I'm not able to do working with static clip art. You can see here on the screen or on my document in Illustrator that I've got set up a flame, a feather, and a piece of barbed wire. Now this flame, if I want to start adding it to a design, I can do some things with it with the warp tool and the envelope, but I don't have the same level of control or functionality that I have with brushes. Working with brushes, I've been able to work with textures and different types of design assets and elements for my designs, and I've set up over well over a thousand brushes, and that's available in the Illustrator brush pack. Working with the brushes, I found that I'm able to, you know, if you look at t-shirt design, really, it's a matter of typically of a piece of art, some text. And then as you go beyond that, you have some textures, design elements, splats and grunge and things you want to put in the background. And being able to add those elements very quickly and very easily with a lot of control has been one of the biggest breakthroughs I've had in my career because now I can just start to form my art or my elements to my design as opposed to trying to shape static clip art. Now I'm working with brushes. If I want to add flames, feathers, brushes, splats, the list goes on and on. There's well over a thousand brushes and just about everything under the sun. Half tones and abstracts and all kinds of different things. Grunges and watercolors and the list goes on and on and on. So if I'm working with clip art, I'm going to have a lot of work to do if I want to shape it or form it to my design. And very often because we're working in t-shirts, we like to have a nice balance in the design and just get the whole thing full of different types of effects. Not to the point where we're being too busy in our design, but to the point where we've got some nice touches and nice looks going on in the elements of the design. Working with static clip art, you know, I can do some things with this. I can make some changes here working with the envelope or the war tool, etc. But that's going to be very time consuming and I don't really have the ability to dial the shape in and then tweak it. Now let's take a look at what happens when this is set up as a brush. I'm going to go ahead and delete this here. Do the same here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and get a brush. Now I'm going to be working with this piece of art in an interactive fashion. I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's say, this brush right here. I'll just left click, hold down, and create a stroke, and we'll just arch that and bring that up this way. Now you can see this is a little bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and select this, and we'll change this to, I'll say, three points right about there. Now, looking at this, I have the ability to change the shape of the brush. I have complete control over it through the nodes and lines. I can bring this over this way, arch this out that way more. I can bring this over here and bring this up like that and really interactively dial in how I want to shape my design asset this brush to my actual design. Going even further I have the ability to use a thing called the width tool over here and I can come in with that and I could make this width bigger here and I could come up here at the top and I could pinch this in more and make that sharper at the top and then flow down that way. Now understanding that when I'm working with brushes that I can form my design assets to my design whether it be flames, barbed wire, thorns, lightning, there's actually some lightning in here. Being able to do that gives me the ability to create excellent elements and backgrounds and effects for my designs literally in a matter of a minutes. Now let's take a look at some of these designs I've set up here. And One of the things you want to be aware of when you're working as a graphic designer I want to make sure I've got everything selected here or a screen printer is that if you understand how to work with and have the correct design assets and get really nice designs out into your local community that says a lot for your company. You want the best looking graphics that you can get out the door. But the issue is, I've said many times for us as screen printers, we have minutes not hours. We're typically hiding 10 or 15 or 25 dollars in an art setup. That means we've got 15 or 20 minutes to set up a design to do some work for a client. Unlike agencies where they've got weeks and months to work on logos, we're restricted down to minutes. So having assets like brushes is very important for us. I'm going to go here and take a look at the chopper here. And you'll notice here's a, here's a, here, let me go ahead and turn on this garment here. I always like to work on the shirts. Um, take a look at this layer 11 here. This is some design assets I set up with brushes. And here I had some tribals that I've actually built out with some cracks and distress built into them. But look at how they flow with design.
as you can see there. Now beneath that I've got another design I set up using the flames and some barbed wire and some splats and here I've got some inverted halftone effects into the background. So you can see all I had to do was just come in and stroke this in, stroke, 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 a couple of strokes. In a matter of five or ten minutes I've got a really nice design set up. I didn't have to go through and manipulate all of the different pieces of art that I wanted to shape to the design. And we'll go ahead and turn these off and here I've got a Mountain Dew logo. Now beneath that I've got some effects that I set up on that. Let's go ahead and zoom out so we can see that on the actual t-shirt a little bit better. There we go. And then beneath that, here's another one set up with some halftone abstract brushes that I built out. Now, clients come in, they ask, well, here's just my logo, and I'd like to get this on a t-shirt. And you set that up for them, and then you set up another one with some brushes, and say, well, here's what you asked for, but we put together some different looks for you. Which one do you like better? Eight times out of ten, they're going to go, well, this looks a lot better. It brings a little bit more attention to the shirt, even for promotional product purposes. And when they do that, you say, well, I can do this one for you, but it's going to cost you an extra buck and a half, two bucks a shirt. It took you five or ten minutes to set this up, and then you're going to make an extra buck and a half or two bucks a shirt. The customer is thinking a dollar fifty, two dollars a shirt, but on a hundred shirts, that's another two hundred dollars in the order. Not only that, but this is where you start to get control over the, over the graphics that are going out of your shop. Instead of just the art that your clients are bringing in, you're able to add effects to it, elements to it, designs to it, and send it out the door, and you've got better designs going out into your local market. Your clients show up at an event with a really nice t-shirt with some brushes and effects laid out really well, and the other guys are standing there with some clip arty stuff, and they start asking, you know, where'd you get those t-shirts? And I've seen this again and again in the industry. It works very well. So we want to have all the tools and understanding possible at our fingertips to be able to do these things very quickly and very easily and set up nice designs. Let me go ahead and turn that off. We'll turn that off. And here I have a senior class graphic, senior 2013. And here I built out some distress and grunge for that, working with brushes, setting that all up and then using the crop tool to knock it out on top. And we can see that effect built in with some of the transparencies of some of the grunge brushes. Go ahead and turn these two off. We've got a baseball here and then we've got a baseball tail. We've actually got some tails in here also and you can form these tails. Then once you form the tail you can go through interactively changing and seeing what things look like. Here I've got a baseball design. Here we used some tribal barbed wire and splats to add sort of barbed wire wing looking effect to the design. Here we've got a skull design, and here we've added some feathers, some splats, and here we've got some tribal bands down here at the bottom. We should be looking at this on the white garment right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in there, and we can see the effect of the tribal bands that are kind of set up like thorns here down, coming down around the side of the shield. So you can see that working with these brushes, we're able to form things to our designs. One of the other benefits is the fact that when we've set up our brush designs, if we want to take a look at things with different brushes on them, we can swap them out very dynamically as opposed to how we would, could be working with, let's say, and I want to go ahead and go ahead and turn this off just for the moment because I want to select these tribal effects here from these brushes, and then I'll go ahead and turn this back on with that selected. And I could go through and change out or swap out to see what things are going to look like. Now that's a little bit too small there. I'd have to change the brush size, but you can see that I can actually go in and change these out. I'm going to go ahead and open up the um, shapes here. I'm going to go to shapes. Now I've set this up with this particular one of these assets here, but once I've set this up, I can check it out and see what it looks like with different brushes. As you can see there, I can swap them out and get ideas of what that effect could look like if I was using different brushes on it. Now going through my design swapping out different pieces of clip art would be very time consuming. And then we're back to the original. I could say, well, what's it going to look like with this brush? And I could change the size of these. That's a little bit too small. I'll come up here to a .35 and get an idea of what that would look like. And then I could actually go in there and work with that. So working with brushes gives me the ability to form my art to my design, swap out very easily and do a lot of different looks and effects that are very popular in the market, but it gives me the ability to do them 
very quickly and very easily. And we're going to see that in the next few videos. Now we'll go ahead and wrap here session one, and we'll continue in our next sessions.